Grace Hour, broadcasting live from our studios right here at the home of the Greater Grace World Outreach in Baltimore, Maryland. And we welcome you, friends, to our Tuesday broadcast. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. Hope you can stay with us for the full hour-long broadcast as we continue to develop our theme for our new week of broadcasting, which is God, Our Healer. And friends, we want you to know that following the message today, you can join us on the broadcast uh, simply by getting to a phone and dialing one of the following numbers. Toll free in North America, the number for you to dial is 800-338-7060. That is, of course, the toll free number, 800-338-7060, anywhere throughout North America, Canada, and the United States. And in the Baltimore area, we encourage you, friends, to give us a call at 410-483-3700. And that's the local number right here in the greater Baltimore area. We want to welcome those of you that are listening locally on our station, WRBS, 1230 on the AM dial. Great to have you folks with us. And many of you, of course, tune in on a regular basis throughout the week, and we appreciate that so much. And uh, hope to hear from some of you today when those phone lines are open as well. Everyone else listening to the Grace Hour live on the Internet at gracehour.org. And many of you, of course, will be joining us live throughout the globe. And we hope to hear from some of you as well when those phone lines are open. And everyone else is listening and watching on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. And we appreciate all of you joining us for our live Tuesday edition of the Grace Hour. And we want you to know, friends, of course, if you can't reach us by phone, you can always send us an email. Your emails can be addressed to questions at gracehour.org. And you can tweet us your comment or question at the Grace Hour. Um, But again, the best way for you to contact us, if it's possible, you pick up that phone when the phone lines are open and join us live on the Grace Hour and share your comments, your questions, testimonies, You may have a counseling need that we could assist you with or a prayer request that you would like the body of Christ to join you in praying for. Whatever the nature of your call, please, again, don't hesitate. When those phone lines are open, give us a call and join us live on the Tuesday edition of the Grace Hour. And again, our theme, God is our healer. And, you know, when you think of the healing of God, you know, so often we limit that to physical healing. And yet, we have seen recently a lot, especially leading up to our nation's election, uh, people quoting from Second Chronicles 7.14, where God spoke of what? Healing our land. So it's possible that land can be healed. Uh, God spoke to the children of Israel through the prophet Jeremiah. He spoke to them about healing their backslidings. And again, it's not only sickness and illness, even in Second Kings chapter 2, verse 21, God says that he would have healed the, the, the waters. So again, healing can take place in so many different realms and in so many different areas. Sometimes we do limit it to physical healing, but God is our healer, wants to heal our land, wants to heal our minds, wants to heal our hearts, wants to heal our relationships, wants to heal, uh, well, maybe reconciliation between people, not only in their personal relationships, but in their relationships to the church, the ministry, the body of Christ. There's just so many different realms in which God can express his healing ministry, and so many different realms that need the healing ministry of God. But he is our healer, and we trust him for that, and so often we do cry out in our prayers for the healing of God in so many different areas, and so often he does just that. He hears and he heals to the glory of God. So that's our theme this week, friends, on the Grace Hour. Pastor Schaller has joined us in the studio, and he's going to bring today's devotional message, and then following his message, again, a reminder, we will open the phone lines. You can join us live on the broadcast. As love, when the Jews were in Egypt, uh, they were slaves. And then when the plagues came, uh, God delivered them. In the plague, in the season, when the plague was in Egypt, and then, of course, he took them out of Egypt and, 
and uh, and they moved on, and um, he wanted to uh, give them the promise, the land that was promised to their forefathers more than 400 years earlier. But he says here in Exodus 15, 26, if you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. So, do you remember any of those diseases or plagues, house of love, that were on the Egyptians? Yeah, frogs. Frogs? Uh, lice. Yes. Uh, yeah. The 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 plague upon their cattle and oh there were just ten of them altogether right 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 so he said here I, which I have brought upon the Egyptians for I am the Lord that heals thee so our week is on the subject of God he being our our healer and and we have had this uh, pandemic and. Um, and now, now, just to think about being at the other side of it, uh, and, you know, um, it seems to be less uh, potent, not uh, with the same intensity as earlier. But in any case, God, God being our healer, to be God conscious and to reflect on God as our healer is what what we're what we're talking about. So there were the boils, um, and there there was the uh, locusts. There were the uh, there was the blood. The river turned to blood. Blood. The Nile River. You had um, uh, hail from the sky that came down, and then other. Uh, sicknesses we read in the Bible, epilepsy, fever, insanity, leprosy, loss of appetite, uh, paralysis, uh, consumption, or uh, maybe that's tuberculosis. We have hemorrhoids. We have bleeding, um, the issue of blood, of Matthew 9, uh, sunstroke, uh, so, um, when, when Jesus was here on the earth, this was a large part of the gospels, the healing that came with him when he was here. And to think that our, our lives, that, that healing happens maybe more than we, when we real, that we realize, and we read that proverb in, in chapter four, that the word of God uh, is the health of our flesh, that he sent his word and healed them, Psalm 107 and verse 20. Um, but it does look like uh, disease is a governing element in the, in the plan of God. He said, if you shall despise my statues, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that you will not do all my commandments, but you break my covenant, I will also do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, the burning aog, that shall consume the eyes, cause sorrow of heart, and you shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. Also, every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, then will the Lord bring upon you until you be destroyed. Uh, is, is sickness uh, part of God um, draw, drawing people to himself? And then uh, do we, does he get our attention? Does he get our attention? Do we turn to him? book of Amos chapter 4 there's this phrase repeated I believe four times and you will not return unto me 
you will not return unto me. Like there's a famine, and you will not return to me. There's a drought, and you will not return unto me. I, it's it, it's obvious there that that these things are designed of God to get get our attention and for us to be drawn to God. Well, then, is he healing? Does he heal? Psalm 41, 4, I said, Lord, be merciful unto me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. Well, we talk about healing of the body, but what about the healing of resentments, the healing of jealousies, the healing of uh, of uh, perversion, the healing of uh, fixed thought, thinking patterns, the healing that of the soul, the, the healing of regret, remorse, the healing of uh, some bitterness of spirit or heart, the bitterness, the anger, the hatred, healing. I read about a a person who wrote a letter to uh, forgive and apologize, and and he said when he put the mail the letter in the mailbox, the whole thing was over in his soul. He was healed in his soul. He was healed of a bad attitude, of a bitterness, of resentment. He was totally, he was totally healed. Okay. Listen to Isaiah 53 and verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. This is Christ. Bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Well, this is the penalty of our sin on Jesus Christ. And with his stripes, we think of the Roman scourging of Christ and his back uh, shredded, uh, ribbons of flesh and blood. His stripes, we are healed. Well, when does this happen? Well, in our lifetime and definitely at the resurrection when we are glorified and our mortal bodies are brought up out of the grave, that we are in heaven in our soul and spirit. But then when, when our body bodies are raised, we are healed. Jeremiah 3, 22. Return, you backsliding children. Isn't that a good word, Pastor Love? Would you say something about that? Return, you backsliding children children well it's great to know that they're his children and that he'll do whatever it takes to get them to return to him great return you backsliding children and i will heal your backslidings your bad habits your addictions the things that you've fallen into kind of trapped Return to me. I will heal your backslidings. I will release you. I will heal you of your anger, your bitterness, your 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 arrogance, your pride, your stubbornness. To return to me. Behold, we will come unto thee. We, this is uh, the Trinity. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit will come unto thee, for you are the... Behold, I'm sorry. Behold, we come unto thee. Okay, the people come to God, for you are... The Lord our God, Jeremiah seventeen fourteen, Hosea six one. Come, let us return unto the Lord, for He has torn, and He will heal us. He has smitten, and He will bind us up. Now's the time for us to turn. God sent COVID into this world, and we could use that verse in Amos to say and you will not return unto me. Uh, a hurricane, and you will not return unto me. Financial problem, and you will not return unto me. But I would like to say 
we have returned unto the Lord. We have heard him. We have believed him. We have surrendered. We have trusted. We have surrendered our resentments uh, toward other people. We have uh, surrendered our hearts to him. We are trusting in him. And so he says, um, Come, let us return unto the Lord, for he is torn, and he will heal us. He has many, he will bind us up. Luke 4, 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Did Jesus Christ do that? Did he heal the brokenhearted? To preach deliverance to the captives. Does he set the captives free? And recovering of sight, sight to the blind. Did he heal any blind people? To set at liberty them that are bruised, those that are crushed, to deliver them, set them uh, free. And the answer is yes, that's why he came. He was anointed for this reason. Isaiah 1 5. Why should you be stricken any more? You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. Isn't it ironical that we could get stricken and smitten and hurt, but we will not come to God? We might have a bad divorce, might have a, a child that has a problem, might have financial trouble, but we will not return to the Lord. I want to return to the Lord. Why should you be stricken any more? I would like him. Why will you revolt more and more? I'd like to be broken, broken and contrite heart. He will not despise. Psalm fifty-one, seventeen. I'd like to come to him, and 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 seek him, and put my trust in him. Jeremiah eight twenty-two. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? Is there no bomb in Gilead? What's the answer to that? Yes, there has to be a bomb in Gilead. Is there a physician there? Excuse me. Is there a physician there? Yes, there must be. Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? Why? Why? Why do people not get healing? Why do they have a sick head and the whole heart is faint? Why do they have these fears and they even make up things? Uh, even sometimes they feed on negativity. I was reading a little article here about in an, in an old people's home, there were nettles along the pathway and the people would uh, would would have some problem with their legs, and they needed uh, some kind of healing uh, from the nettles. So the gardener and the the leaders in the in the old people's home they they uh, remove them. Let me read it. It says uh, there was a California old lady's home that scratched so many legs and brought on so many cases of nettle rash because on the grounds there were the nettles. And finally, uh, the gardener dug up the plants. And then there was a committee that visited the superintendent and wanted the nettles to be restored. They gave us something to talk about, said the spokeswoman. Now we just sit around for hours saying nothing. Back went the nettles. Some people would miss the possibility of a grouch. They are so negative that they fear they would be lost if they were turning positive. Like if they needed the problem so they could be negative. They wanted something to complain about. They wanted to have something to talk about. They could only talk about a negative and complain about negative things. They need, they need healing. It's a joy when you talk about God and healing. It's a joy when we talk. But the whole head is sick and the heart is faint. We've got our eyes on the wrong things. We may be programmed in a disease 
and we may be programmed into our our complaining and our fears, and we are programmed into our worries and anxieties, and that's all that we talk about. We don't know how to be healthy. God is our healer. Turn to me. I will make you sweet. I will fill you. I'll make you firm. I'll make you strong. I'll make you edifying. I'll give you a song in the night. I'll teach you how to bless. I'll teach you how to speak, how to praise God, how to edify people. I'll teach you how to build up. I'll teach you how to think with me. I'll bring healing to you so that you can bring healing wherever you go. That's one way of looking at it, Pastor Love. What do you think about that nettle story? Yeah, it's fascinating that that they were just lost because they were now so positive. (laughs) (laughs) And nothing nothing like they could. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Amazing. God is our healer. And and he said, I will put none of the diseases of Egypt on you. And then he leads them out. And this is the way we must think. We return unto me. And and this is how, you know, the new life, the spirit of God and the mind of Christ, this is why Jesus came. And and this is uh you know it, it, it's it's absolutely um a foolish thing be, be, to live in our iniquity, practice it, to believe in it, to suffer from it. It's a foolish thing when we can be healed and be like a child again. I like that comparison that we, lest we become like children, we cannot enter the kingdom of God. How much fun kids have how they laugh in the street and play around and have a good time. And I think healing, healing from God is not only our body, but our soul and definitely our spirit. If our spirit is filled with the Holy Spirit, then we will be healthy because we will have the love and the joy and the peace and the truth of God in our heart, in our spirit. That will affect our soul, and that will also affect our body. I wonder if we bring upon ourselves ulcers, high blood pressure, like stress, we bring upon our body these problems because our soul is also sick. But if our and that and, but if our spirit, if we are filled with the spirit, that will affect our soul. And that will, in turn, affect our bodies. So that's it. Praise the Lord for that word today. Amen. Well, great great thoughts to get our our day started here on the Grace Hour, friends, and the healing, the healing that comes from God. Uh, And it's not just in our physical bodies, which it can be, but it's our souls, it's our spirits, it's our hearts, it's our minds, it's our past, it's our relationships. It covers everything. You're listening live to the Grace Hour, friends, on this Tuesday afternoon, and we have a couple of minutes left in the first half of our broadcast locally on WRBS. We'll be signing off in just a minute or two, uh, but we want you to know that you can still join us live. Uh, Phone lines are now open, so fill up those lines. 800-338-7060 is the toll-free number. That's in all of North America, Canada, and the United States. And locally, 410-483-3700. Many of you are weighing in on Facebook Live, YouTube Live, uh, joining us from around the globe. Ilgar in Baku, Azerbaijan. Welcome, Jane. And Pastor Ron Swingle. Uh, Pastor Ron says, for 40-plus years, God tried to save me softly. And I thought it was okay, even in my sin. But then he put me in a place that I... I thought was my deathbed, and I really did get saved. <laughs> Praise the Lord forever for that. Yeah, that's how God works. I mean, sometimes it takes, uh, he'll go to extremes to get our attention, so we'll return to him. I mean, do you think that 
death bed, Pastor Ron's death bed, was get what well, that was where he really got his attention. Oh yeah, yeah. Usually that does it. <laughs> when you see people operate in their independence and in their pride throughout the course of their lives, and they have it all together, but then you see, you know, their physical health starts to suffer. Um, they start to lose their faculty. All of a sudden, it's like, well, maybe I do need God. Maybe I cannot, you know, sustain my life as I once was able to. Maybe, maybe I should trust God with my life, especially with my, you know, eternal soul, because life is going to break down. It really doesn't matter who you are. It's inevitable. It uh, happens. I heard about this man. He, he went to the hospital. He was 35 years old. You know, that's young. He's 35. He had a great job, a great wife, great family life, everything about it, but but he had this amazing anxiety. He had anxiety. He worried. He had fear underneath, you know. But if you looked at his life, it's like the perfect life. But when you when you look again, you see that actually he was suffering. He had heart, and his heart uh, would race for no reason out of the blue, you know, the heart and, and the uh, blood pressure. He was, he was actually a sick man. So to look at him, perfectly healthy and everything, whatever you do, but there was a problem there. And in the next part of the program, you're going to answer. With <laughs> okay. Well, there you have it, friends. We're going to wrap up this first half hour. Thanks so much for joining us. And we do have another half hour coming your way as we continue to develop this great theme. It's God, who is our healer. For those of you that have to sign off, thanks for joining us. We'll be back tomorrow for the Wednesday edition of the broadcast. Join us then. We're back with you live, friends, at gracehour.org and Facebook Live, YouTube Live. A lot of you are tuning in today and joining us with your comments, your questions. Uh, Pastor Bruce Moon is tuning in, listening from Mexico. Appreciate that. Pastor Ben says, praise the word that brings healing in Psalm 107, verse 20. I wonder how many people, Pastor Scheller, make the connection between the proclamation of God's words and the healing of their soul. I think a lot of uh, people forsake that and miss yeah. out on that opportunity because they can be observing, as the scripture says, some lying vanities, and then as a result, they forsake their own mercy. Yeah. I mean, God has it. It's available. It comes mm. in the form of a message. But so many people think, that's not the answer to what ails me. It was a doctor I knew in Finland who told me that she believed that coming to the church and listening to the Word of God was healing for her. It was healing. It heals people. It was like her general statement was, yeah, she believes that the Bible, God speaks the Bible, and it heals and coming to church and listening, and there's actually healing in it. And maybe we get healed more often than we realize. Like even like something like my blood pressure, uh, my general state of consciousness, my my sense of contentment and peace, uh, and and the healing that can happen in the body, because the the soul is healthy, and being fed, this is a uh, a great asset for us as believers, and maybe that's why we live a little longer. You know, there's some insurance company that was for Christians, and like there was a very good deal. Very good deals, and the company made a lot of money because um, the Christians lived long, and they didn't have the same problems. Like generally, we're not smoking and drinking and those kind of things that can radically affect your health. If you go past the love when you go to the doctor, what's one of the first things they ask you? Do you smoke? Yeah. Do you drink alcohol? And what if I said yes? I, he doesn't. Then you go into respond. another category. <laughs> they don't respond by saying, well, that's good. <laughs> you, know, they, you know, when you say no, they no, do. He, he like has two books on his desk, and <laughs> it depends on which how you answer. He opens that book. <laughs> oh, I got I to gotta open the black book. <laughs> you know, because the nicotine constricts your veins and arteries. 
constricts your blood vessels. It affects a, a blood flow to the, the organs. There is an aging that happens with cigarettes that's not the same. And then, of course, the alcohol is also a detriment. So uh, Christians actually, but, but then they add the Bible being spoken to us, and then what you have somebody like Moses, 120 years old, and it says his natural force was not abated. It seems like he's a teenager, like Ron Swingle. He is a teenager, though he's 86 years old. Mm, that's huh? amazing. Yeah. Beautiful. Pastor Ron's out there. He's listening and <laughs> enjoying. Yeah. yeah. Let's go to the phones. Chris is joining us from Washington State, way out in the great Northwest. Uh, Chris, uh, thanks for holding on, and you're first today. Go right ahead. All right. Well, first of all, thank you for such a great message and devotional. And, and not just that, my heart is so overflowing with thanksgiving for our ministry, for you, Pastor Schaller, for you, Pastor Love, for each and every man of God that comes with a word fresh, 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 always so fresh. And you know that I couldn't listen to this Grace Hour without <laughs> making a comment, because this is such a great subject, such a great subject. You know, there's actually a um, form of science and, and a form of study in medicine, which is called psychoimmunology, and it is exactly as it sounds. It is the impact of our psyche on our immune system, and this is very, very, very well documented, you know, as you've been reading so many of the articles and reports on this subject. It's huge. It's absolutely huge. And um, just the other day, I was um, writing a post about the impact of a diet of people that um, eat a lot of fruits and vegetables and how when they are compared with people who do not they have a greater sense of personal worth and personal satisfaction and general happiness in life. So, you know, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And I think that this is something that could be really, really studied and really talked about and really um, given heed to the effect, the profound effect that our thoughts have on our physical being. We had an amazing um, call with Pastor Ben and Ramona the other day on Zoom, and he was speaking um, out of Psalm 131, the great chapter of, you know, being weaned and being quieted. And he spoke about how we are in the school of weaning. And I think that this time that we're facing for all of us um, in the body of Christ and, and really globally it's a time where we're being weaned, where we're being kind of narrowed down and constricted in our ways. And God is saying to us, hey, you, hey, come up, come up hither, come up hither. I've got a place for you. I've got a, I've got a, I've got a culture for you. I've got an upper room for you. And in this place, there's no room for anything of the earth. Uh, there's no room for anything that's of the dust but this is a place of fellowship with me and a place of intimacy and a place of preparation for what is to come. And I, I'm, I'm just happy as a clam. I'm, I'm just so happy, so thankful, so contented, so full, so empty, so rejoicing. And um, this ministry, hey, <laughs> would we be anybody? Would we say these words if it wasn't for this ministry? <laughs> I think not. I think not. We would never think the way we think if it wasn't for this ministry. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Pastor Schaller. Thank you, Pastor Stevens. Thank you for the legacy we have and that we can think with God on these issues. Wow, thank you. That's beautiful. Good word. It really is. Yes. I, I think your gratitude that you just expressed, Chris, is is another form of healing and health to our bodies. Don't you agree? Yes, absolutely. In fact, there's a whole movement of gratitude on a very secular level, and people recognize and acknowledge that gratitude is so healing, 
you know, in a natural realm that, you know, they have gratitude journals and, you know, the whole nine yards. But yes, absolutely. It is. It is. Yeah, I think that's what's so important, too, about the local assembly. When you come together, you're worshiping God. You're expressing your gratitude toward him. And I think that that's where the healing begins in our services. Uh, And then, of course, we hear the message, and that brings even more health and healing into our lives. So I think the benefits of assembling as a local assembly, as a local church, I I don't even think that you can put an estimate on how valuable it is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. And I just want to make an interjection because, again, um, you know, what what you all have right now in Baltimore is amazing, and it's kind of the exception and not the rule. Um, as you know, so many of us are in so many places where we do not have the option or opportunity to gather, and our Zoom meetings have become our churches and our, you know, internet and our grace hour and our early morning devotionals, 6, 8, 12 minutes, and the singing of our precious Pastor Schaller. This is our church. You know, this is our church. And, um, you know, there is a vast number of people out there that are not gathering physically, and and yet we are very much a viable and active, albeit um, not um, face-to-face part of that church. Chris, thanks so much for the call. Some great thoughts to add to uh, the importance of recognizing and relying and depending upon God, who is our healer. Amen, amen. God bless you all. Love you, and thank you. (laughs) 800-338-7060 is the toll-free number, and locally in Baltimore, it's 410-483-3700. Joseph is next, and he's joining us from the Baltimore area. Hi, Joseph. Hey, how you doing? Hey, Pastor, uh, love. Hey, what is what's God going to do with this pandemic? Really? I mean, like uh, it's like a four hundred people size, and like a death angel, or what? Is is that your question? Yeah. Well, I mean, we, we, no, we I, I don't. I don't think so, because in fact, I mean, obviously, we we've seen. So many people lose their lives worldwide and in our own country, what, over 250,000. So it's really, it's staggering. Uh, But as Pastor Schaller mentioned earlier, I think we're seeing what may be a milder strain of the virus. We're seeing people getting sick. and, And what's interesting is that there's no real pattern even to the sickness of those that contract this COVID-19 because some people get certain symptoms, other people get different symptoms. So there's, it's almost like it's, it's, uh, it's like this evolving virus that we're still trying to understand. The good news is a vaccine may be close. So we may, uh, we may be seeing the, it's going to pass. Yeah. Right. Oh, I, I think it is. It's I mean, pa- we and, all and, thought and, they would and, pass quickly, but. And you know, uh, one of the things just that I think of is people are afraid of dying, but they, they should actually be afraid of going to hell. Like that's the big thing. Like, fear not him who can cast body and soul into, but, if, uh, I'm sorry, that can kill your body. Fear not him who can kill your body, but fear him who can ki- throw soul and body into hell. Into hell, that's the thing that, that we should be afraid of. Not us as believers, we're not afraid of that. That's why, actually, we're not afraid of dying. Like, ultimately, I mean, we don't want to die, but it, we know it's going to happen, and we're not we're not afraid of it in that way. We face it every day in our thinking. Okay, I'm ready. I'm prepared. Jesus, save me. Thank you, Lord. I have eternal life. I pass from death into life. But the, those unbelievers that are walking around afraid of dying, this is very good for them. But they should transfer that also to, hey, you, are you going to go to hell? That's the thing to be afraid of. You're going to go to hell. Can you imagine going to hell? That's unbelievable to go to hell, you know? So this is uh, actually a good thing if God can get people's attention and draw them to himself because people are going to die. If you don't die from the pandemic, you die from uh, some other thing. You know, everybody goes. That's right. Everybody goes, and you're going to face... 
the reality of God, and without Christ, you go to hell. That's John 3.36. So that's what I, I like to talk about that. That's the, that's the big stuff. That's right. That's the real issue. So, so we have a message for people out there that are running around worried about this uh, COVID. I mean, that's fine, but it's also passing. I mean, it, 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 what, what we say the vaccine or, or the virus is mutating or whatever it is. I'm not pretending. I'm not scientific. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not interested in it, actually, to be honest with you, in that way. What I'm interested in is the fact that people are afraid to die, and they should be afraid of going to hell. And if you're not right, you have not returned unto me, and then he says in Amos 4, prepare to meet thy God. Mm. That's everything. That's the love. Go ahead. Okay. Thanks, we, Joseph. Yeah. Appreciate the call. We've got some uh, comments here from on Facebook. There's one there. Yeah. You want to read that? Sure. Uh, Hane Pinkova writes, Isaiah 55, verse 4, God's thoughts and ways are higher than mine. We may see one piece of the puzzle, but God sees the whole picture. I've been through a lot, but God has used it to reach other hurting people. I have peace that when I, even now when I, I don't need medications anymore, God will use doctors to get us off some medications, which is what's happening in my life. That's wow. a great testimony, honey. Thank wow. you. Great. She's in the Pittsburgh area and listening to the Grace Hour. Um, Stephen Chapman writes, I believe that healing is here. It's happening. Amen. And uh, we want to see it continue to happen. You know, Pastor Shell, go back to that that story you told about that brother who forgave and uh, went to the mailbox and put the letter in the mailbox. And as soon as he put the letter in the mailbox, it was over. Resentment was gone. Yeah. He couldn't even remember it. That is a healing. That's a healing. That is a healing. That's a, a person's life could be destroyed by underlying resentment. Wow. So true. That's uh, You carry that around. Mm, that's like a, carrying around a, just a lead weight, isn't it? Just uh, yeah. It hurts you. you. You might think that you know, your intention is to hurt the person who you're resentful of, but it hurts you. It's like, for, you know, for unforgiving spirit. It, it poisons you. It doesn't touch the other person. It poisons you. So mm -hmm. to be delivered from those things uh, just takes this great weight off the soul and brings such freedom. This is a little illustration I always think of uh, just, you know, somebody holding onto the back bumper of a car and the car goes and they hang on to the back bumper. What do you think is going to happen? Not, not a good outcome. Was well, the car going to be affected? By not, at, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, who's going to get hurt when yeah. I hold on to that resentment or jealousy or bitterness or hatred? Do you know that they, I read a book on for total forgiveness, nine out of 10 people, when they offend you, they don't know that they're doing it. It's kind of like the car in the, in the illustration, the car doesn't even know you're there. And you're holding onto the back bumper, and it's dragging you through the street, and you re you refuse to let go of it. The car doesn't even know you're there, mm. and you're suffering, and the car is not. Wow, the car, but you are suffering. Yeah, you know, Get beat up. You real are good. getting beat up really good, and the longer you hold on, the more that's going to hurt, yeah. and uh, it's not getting any better. And you can just imagine people screaming at you, "Let it go." Yeah, let it, and I think God sends the same message. You know, when it comes to unforgiveness, a bitter spirit, resentment, let it go. Yeah, it's only going to destroy you. Oh well, the devil says here, take a hold of this rope, hold on, and don't let it go, and I'll catch you later. On the flip side, you know that you reminds know. me of a story, Pastor Schaller. One man, he was so fearful about getting up on his roof and, you know, cleaning out the gutters and making some simple repairs to his roof that he thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tie a rope around my waist. And what he ended up doing was tying the other end of the rope to the bumper of his car. 
just to be certain that he would and have an his, accident. And his daughter. No, or in his this wife. case, his, well, this is a true story. His wife okay, had to go get some bread. She had to go to the store. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it, honestly, he was on the other side of the house, so she did not see him, nor did she see the rope that yeah. he so ingeniously tied to the car. So off she and, goes and, down the street, and he is pulled over the top of his house. I know it sounds kind of funny; it's terrible to it's think horrible. about. Yeah. But she—he's literally—he was being dragged down is the street. Is he alive today? He is, uh, but still has a tough is time he, trusting is, his wife. Is he still married? <laughs> yeah. Still has a tough time <laughs> trusting his wife. Uh, but neighbors came out of the house. I and know screaming. you saw that rope. <laughs> I know you did. <laughs> You knew I that it was, you knew I was on the other it's end. It's terrible to laugh about it, but <laughs> yeah. you just you envision it in your mind. It's, oh, pray for their marriage for sure. Oh my, yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go to the phones. Harry, uh you're on the Grace Hour, sir. Go right ahead. Hi, Pastor. Yes, go right well, ahead, Harry. Thank you. This is so good, so important what you're saying, Pastors about uh, our soul and being healed and and about uh you know the true reason there's a real hell and that's what we why we tell people um this is, is it, excuse me isaiah said he related the sickness to sin in 33 when he, remember when he said that about the inhabitants shall not say i am sick the people shall be forgiven of their iniquity and I was like thinking, like that's so true. You know, we have to. You know, this is what it's about. You know, they tell them people that are sick and people that aren't saved yet, and they could, you could have you know a lot of healing. Um, the fear of the Lord, it said in Proverbs, is health to my navel and marrow to my bones. That's my mother had leukemia, and that deals with the the blood marrow by the and that's hearing the Lord and hearing Him is like the first stage of healing. I was thinking like the lady that uh, touched the hem of his garment, I mean the lady that got healed and she felt within herself that she was healed of her disease, the horrible disease. I was wondering if she wasn't saved, but she heard, she felt within herself and she heard within herself and she heard first. She heard the gospel somehow. And that was like the, the most necessary healing. So she could go to heaven and that's so important. Like prospering, being health is good. Prospering, being health, but our soul prospering and being in health comes by faith. Comes by hearing the word of God. And mm. I just second you know, that motion about what you're saying about the, all these things. Maybe drawing people, the sickness, the corona, the you know different things. But there is one day. You know, one day if we don't have the Lord. Yeah, that, know, that's everything. Maybe. That's everything. Uh, isn't it interesting, Harry? You got all those portions of Scripture. Three hundred and sixty-five times we read, "Fear not." But there's one time when Jesus said, "Fear, fear the one who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell." That's uh, amazing when you think about that. I want to also jump in there and just say one more thing about this. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the law of this subject of medicine medicine, medications, and so on, could it be that God would want to heal us and we turn to the doctors or we turn to medications? I mean, I mean, you know, of course we respect the medical community and, and we understand something about medications, but are people overly medicated? Are they overly sensitive about their feelings and their condition? When actually maybe, like God would, you, there could be a new normal. A new normal, you learn to suffer a little, you learn to be disciplined, you learn to turn your pain into something, you know, that moves you. Uh, you take your depression and you relate to God and you grow up. You got to face what, you got to face your, your demons, right? You got to yeah. face your yeah. enemies and and bring God into your heart, into your life. Maybe he sent you this so that you could turn to him. So turn to right. him without the medication. Pastor Love, what do you think? Uh, yeah, wholeheartedly. And as far as, you know, are we over-medicated as a culture? Absolutely. This is perhaps the biggest moneymaker 
in our nation. The, the billions and billions and billions of dollars spent on Medicaid. And sometimes the medications make people worse. They don't help. They don't make them better. Um, and, you know, think about it. Anxiety is, is the, one of the biggest problems in our culture today. Well, how would God heal us from anxiety? Well, he might begin by saying, I don't want you to be anxious for anything. Just a, a word that he gives us. Yeah. And then by Counts. prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, tell me what, tell me those things that trouble you. Pour yeah. your heart out. Cast your care upon me. And I can carry that for you. You don't have to worry about that. You don't have to take thought for tomorrow. You don't have to worry about any of these things. You know, uh, like even being with your friends and having fun, spiritual people, having a good time, rejoicing a lot. What do you think of that? Absolutely. Yeah. I'd rather do that. I mean, that's fun. Yeah. I think go, that that's the beginning of the friend, healing of your, anxiety, rejoicing. Your spiritual friend, your your brothers, sisters, your uh, community, your family, uh, encouragement. But you, you, we also need to learn how to think and relate to life with this attitude. And when we're together, we have a very good time. Amen. Yeah. yeah. I mean, really, there's healing in it. Yep. No question about it. Mm -hmm. Harry, thanks so much for the call. Thank All you. Right. Praise God. Praise God bless you, sir. Yeah. Sign up. Pastor Shelley, we had a, a, someone join us on Facebook Live earlier. They mentioned, uh, they pointed out this verse in 3 John chapter 2, and uh, John writing to his beloved brother Gaius, and he says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Um, that's, a, that's an interesting verse, because I think what he's talking about there is the prosperity of the soul first and foremost, and then that, uh, you know, there can be other kinds of prosperity that can come into our lives. But you don't want to pursue those other forms of prosperity while you neglect the health of your soul. Okay. You want to focus on the health of your soul first and foremost, and then those other things can be added unto you. They're just blessings, but your real foundation is the health of your soul so you're you're saying the first part was about the body right yeah was it was it yeah how does it go again beloved i i wish above all things that you may prosper and be in good health hold it hold it prosper and be in good health so is that about the body yeah good being, health being in good health is about the body yep. right sure okay prosper what do you think that word maybe means? maybe you know from a material perspective, maybe yeah. those kinds of blessings God could give to you what you need and then even beyond that. Uh, but he says you can you can receive these things because your soul is prospering. Okay. So you got a, a pocketbook that would be in good shape, then your health is in good shape, even as your soul is in good shape. Yeah. Yeah. Even as your soul is in so what do you think about that combination? I've got my soul is in great shape, my body is healthy, and then my pocketbook is in good condition. There you go. Hey, strike three. <laughs> yeah. You got the whole enchilada there right there. There you go. There you go. Right? Yeah, but what, what do we see happening? We see the parking lots of our health clubs filled on Sunday morning and the parking lots of our churches empty. Yeah. People have got the cart before the horse, and they're wondering why they have such problems and such difficulties and why they do need to turn to alcohol or to prescription drugs because it's mixed up. It's out of, it's out of whack. It's out of balance. Our souls are the most important possession we have, and we're told to guard our hearts, keep them with all diligence, for out of them come the issues of life. And, you know, Jesus put the premium on the soul. You know, what does a man profit if he gains the whole world but loses his soul? We have to focus on the health of our souls. Well, just a couple of minutes left, friends. Uh, Julie writes from Great Britain. Uh, she says, a merry heart does do good like a medicine. Amen to that. It's always good to get a good laugh in every once in a while. Uh, hopefully not at the exp expense of others, but... Uh, it's good to laugh. It's good because it does indeed do like uh, a medicine. Julie writes, also, our foundation is Christ. He is our rock. We stand on his word, and we have great peace within. 
And Paul, Paul Stevens writes, uh, soul prosperity puts everything else in its rightful place. Amen to that. Sandy says, thanks so much for the message. Um, get on and stay on the highway to holiness and praise God always. Amen. Thanks, Sandy. And, uh, well, just another minute or so left um, in our... You know, la last night we had our Bible class. We had Bible psychology. We had foundations. And then after I went with a bunch of the brothers over to uh, the dorm and we had uh, pizza, we're talking, having good time. I mean, this is about 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. And just uh, seeing these young guys excited about their faith, mm -hmm. seeing young guys really being ministered to in the spirit and remembering the value of that when we were young, Pastor Love, and like what a big impact that makes on the soul and how important it is to follow Christ with all our heart, our mind, our soul, our strength. This is the first commandment and the great one, right? It's yes. to love. It's the love. God loves us, and then we love, and how healthy that is. And in an over-medicated world, in a world where young people are turning to many alternatives and not coming, and how, how they need a healing to come with your emptiness and your loneliness and your fears and come to Jesus Christ and find him. Yeah. Find peace with God. Well, friends, we've uh, reached the end of a, yet another broadcast. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. We really appreciate you sharing your thoughts with us, Facebook Live, YouTube Live, those of you that were able to call. We're going to be back for the Wednesday edition of the Grace Hour. That's coming up tomorrow, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. We hope that you'll make plans to join us then. And again, we want to encourage you to, if you're able to, come on out and join us Wednesday night for our midweek service at 7 p.m. And all are welcome. So until tomorrow at 1 p.m., we'll be back in less than 24 hours, friends. You can join us again on the next edition of the Grace Hour. Thank you, friends. God bless you until tomorrow at the same time. Thanks for listening to The Grace Hour. Our live program airs weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Grace Hour is a ministry of the Greater Grace Church. You are invited to visit Greater Grace at 6025 Moravia Park Drive, Baltimore, Maryland, 21206. For more information, go to gracehour.org or call 1-800-338-7060.